Hi everyone, welcome back to floss tube number two. I'm pretty excited that there is a number two because I'm not known for my consistency. Um, firstly, I'd like to say a huge thank you to everybody who watched my first floss tube. My husband, bless him, could not understand how so many people would be interested in listening to me talk about cross stitch and knitting and crochet. So um, thank you for showing him that there is interest. So um, <laughs> he just continues to be flabbergasted as I do that so many of you watched my floss tube, took the time to subscribe and comment, which was really lovely. And I hope that I have answered everybody's comments. So um, if I haven't, I'll take another look on episode number one and see. But I'm so grateful that you took the time out of your day to spend some time with me and I really appreciate it. So let's get into episode number two. And I'm sorry for the noise. I just get excited and I just bashed my hands down on the table. Um, when I was researching how to do a floss tube, what to include, um, you know, how to go about it. I came across a few uh, fellow first time floss tubers as well. And I wanted to share them with you because I just loved, loved their floss tubes so much. The first one was by a lady called Lindsay at Cat Fur and Cross Stitch. And her first floss tube blew me away. It was really, really huge, a huge, a massive work in pro progress parade. Um, and I immediately felt comfortable with the numbers of works in progress that I had. So I urge you to hop along and see if you can find cat fur and cross stitch. I'll put the links in the, in the um, description below. The second one was Sarah, the traveling stitcher, another first time floss tuber and really lovely, relaxing floss tube, lovely to watch. I really enjoyed spending some time with Sarah. And the third one was the Pink Stitches, who um, are Jamie, Chris and Erica. And I can't remember, sorry, where they're from, but I'll put the link in the description below. But they're three friends who have started a floss tube together and uh, they were very, very funny as well. And they have a dog called Walter who likes to drink out of the toilet. And I related to that because one of my pooches likes to do the same thing. So um, I immediately related to their floss tube. So go check them out if you like. Um, and I've got a couple of favourites that I watch all the time religiously when they come out. Of course, Karen and Brendan at the Fox and Rabbit. I always have a little notification and I can't wait for the little bell to go off to tell me that there's a new video up from Karen and Brendan. Um, and thanks very much for the shout out, Kaz, Brendan. I really appreciate that. Um, in my last video, I think I showed a project bag that I attributed to my lovely friend Andrea, but it was actually one of the... Karen and Brendan's Fox and Rabbit Patreon bags. So I apologize, Karen, I know <laughs> how much effort you put into to making those and I'm really sorry that I misattributed. Um, yeah, you know, first time. <laughs> the other thing I did in my last video, and you can probably still see it here, is the ring light is reflecting my glasses and making me look like a demon. But um, some people will say that that's apt, but I can't figure out how to get it get it missing. I could take my glasses off but I couldn't see anything and um, I would be looking really blank. So uh, other favourite floss tubes, uh, Brenda and the cereal starter. I love Brenda and Laura and I really like to, to, to watch them. It's a really beautiful friendship and they are absolutely prolific and I have a lot of the same taste as they do and I just love seeing everything that they stitch. Um, Mama loves UGB as I said and just keep stitching Pam and Steph are hilarious and I really love their relationship and how they come across on their floss tube as well. So uh, they're three of my favourites and I think I'll share a few of my favourites in every, every floss tube as well. Today we're going to have a look at a few more of my works in progress. I sort of dug out half a dozen I think. I did um, think about doing a massive work in progress parade but then I was worried that I wouldn't have anything to show you in future floss tubes so I thought oh, I'll just do a few at a time. Um, I've got a couple of things that I have um, kitted up that I might show you as well. A couple of books from my library and some knitting and some crochet too because you all seem to like that. I've also got a few older finishes so I had a, a request to show one finish in particular so I've got that for you today. Um, and that's that's about it. I've got a trusty list, so 
so I don't forget anything. Um, I probably will still forget something like I did last time. I forgot to tell you that Annie Bayless was a Hands Across the Sea sampler. Um, sorry, really cute little thing. Um, right, let's get started in some of my starts. I pulled out some of the things, some things that I have been working on recently and some that I haven't touched in a little while, but I'm trying to plan what to take to the stitching retreat. And I guess I'm really fortunate in that I'm taking my car. So I'm going to hop on the boat to Tasmania, take my car and drive from Devonport to Hobart. So I can actually take everything. <laughs> so I'm sort of not limited, but um, I'm trying to sort of plan which projects to take and considering that in my experience, not a lot of stitching gets done at stitching retreats. There's a lot of talking gets done and a lot of networking and a lot of friendships being built and a lot of shopping, but um, not a lot of stitching, but I'm planning on stitching and I might take some crochet as well, just for those times when I've, I've stitched or talked myself out and I'm a bit tired. So first off, we'll start with some samplers that I've been working on. I really love this one. This one is, Amory Pellissier, which is a, from Sovereign Samplers, and Sovereign Samplers are available from the Australian Needle Workshop, The Cruel Goblin, and she's a really, really elegant French sampler. She's done here, the original is in red, but I, I am stitching mine in blue, and I'm using 103. And I'm stitching her on 56 count white clay from Fox and Rabbit. So she's still quite large, but she's so beautiful. Like, I just, I love the placement. She's very elegant. Really, really sweet sampler. So I've made a good start on her. That's on 56 count white clay. White clay would have to be, you know, I used to have a top five favorite colors. I posted the other day that white clay would have to be in my top 10 because there's you know just too many to to love now so that is Amory Pellissier she was um, part of the uh, September sampler uh, stitch along at the Cruel Goblin so um, I immediately started her back in October last year and the sampler weekend I'm hoping will will happen again this year and happen around about October because I'd love to go to that and take along my progress on the two samplers that they were stitching for that. The next one is Plum Street Sampler. Paradise Lost. She's a real sweetie. It's an Adam and Eve sampler. And I'm stitching her on Fox and Rabbit ballet slippers because if you've got a big stash of Fox and Rabbit fabrics why wouldn't you? So that's my start on her already. So we've done Adam, we've done Eve, we've got a really good start on the snake and the tree in the middle. That's Plum Street Samplers Paradise Lost. I love this one so much um, and I think Brendan is stitching this as well um, I haven't done a great deal on it it's it's got a lot of colors like these are all the colors I'm stitching her in DMC um, got a couple of threads there um, lots and lots and lots of colors but you can see there's some really Quite unusual ones in there this red and the blue seem to be quite jarring but when you look in the pattern they're not they don't stand out that much so there must only be little bits of them so there's the colors it's sheep may safely graze Alice Smith 1841 and you can see her here I've started up in this corner but what I love about this sampler is the actual original sampler is quite faded so the can the Reproduction actually recreates the fadedness of the sampler, which is really great. So down, um, I think this side, the colors are quite different to what's in this side, which would absolutely drive some people nuts. 
but I but I really appreciate the the time and effort that the that, that um, Victoria Rose Needle Arts took in in recreating the sampler so faithfully. It's really lovely. I'm stitching her on. I'm going to say white clay. Karen will. Hmm. It might be paper bark actually, but it's definitely 40 count paper bark. And this is what my start is. She's going to be very big. So that's about, I think that's about halfway. So she'll be double that. So, that, and I have got the whole piece of fabric. Yes, yes, I know Karen, I should trim it, but you know, I don't want to do that. So this is my start. In here. We should get back and do a couple of hours on this one every month. That's Sheep May Safely Graze, Alice Smith, 1841. Really pretty. I really love that little border. Um, let me see. Um, there's actually two colours or th two colours there. The next one is the second of the sampler stitch alongs for the Cruel Gablin sampler weekend. And this one is Elizabeth Snazzle. So this is the original. She's a cute little square sampler. And I'm stitching her in the silks, NPS silks. And if I actually sat down and stitched on her, she wouldn't take long to finish. Um, but, you know, that's not how we operate our stitches. She's very cute. Again, this is a Sovereign Samplers available from the Cruel Goblin. I'll put the link to that in the description. But she's cute. Very unusual name. Elizabeth and a very um, unusual spelling of Elizabeth. And Snazzle. And this is my start on Elizabeth and she stitched on, I'm going to say 40 count Eureka for Fox and Rabbit. So this is my start on Elizabeth. She's very cute. And that fabric is quite golden. The Eureka fabric is, is quite a gold. I really like it. Some people might be put off by the fact that Elizabeth was not very symmetrical. It doesn't bother me at all. You know, these these young girls that stitch these samplers, they weren't they didn't have graph paper, they didn't have rulers, they didn't have didn't have very good light most of the time. So I'm happy to faithfully reproduce as they stitch them. See that second motif down the bottom is very cute. Great. That's Elizabeth Snazzle. The next one, oh, have I got a story to tell you about this next one? So way, way back in the linen and threads days, when Karen and when Fox and Rabbit was linen and threads and they had a beautiful needle workshop in the Blue Mountains in, in New South Wales, they had a sampler retreat. It was the very, very first sampler retreat that they had. And I'm going to say it was in 2015, but I could be wrong. I'm sure, Karen, if you're watching, you can comment and tell me. I think it was 2015. And this next sampler was the project from that, that retreat. And I think I started it at the retreat. And I've put maybe a couple of hundred stitches in it a couple of times a year since then. But I love her. This is Joanna, oh, sorry, Jane Joanna Wilkin. And just go back here and it's stitched on I want to say Mayflower it looks a little bit Mayflower and I think it's 36 count but she's got a really sweet border and some lovely motives and a lot of over one text tiny 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 little stitches oh they're hard on the eyes but so beautiful 
and then this really pretty house. Lovely bird in a tree there. I really love her. I also love that there's sort of lights in the windows, which makes it look very becoming, very welcoming. But that's Jane Joanna Wilkinson. And she looks like that. Now this is, I believe, um, I could be wrong, but I believe this is now available from Fox and Rabbit. She's very cute, but a lot of, a lot of over one stitching in the verse, but really, really pretty. Another, another fox and rabbit design. I'm not sure what this linen is. Sorry, um, and my project book is sitting underneath my lamp, so um, I can't get it out. But this is Margaret McNown's. It's a little Scottish sampler. Really, really cute. Lots and lots of little crowns, which is very indicative of the Scottish samplers. Look at the beautiful alphabets. And then in this next section down here, there is some beautiful darning type patterns, and I'll show you those. So, you see here these beautiful sort of darning sections, which makes it really interesting. This is Margaret McNown's of 1828. You know, I've got to put all of these projects back in their projects bags, in the right project bags with the right threads after this. And I'm not looking forward to that at all. And my neighbor has just decided that he needs to mow the lawn. And kindly, he's mowing our lawn. Um, it's just outside the window, so I hope that that's not too loud. The next sampler that I'm going to show you is, I've got a bit of a story about this one. Um, my mother passed away from lung cancer in 2019. And after her funeral, uh, my husband and I, we, was, we were in Tasmania. My husband and I were on the way to the airport and we were very early, so we stopped in at Richmond and there was a lovely gallery there. And I found this sampler in the gallery and I immediately called Karen and said, I found this beautiful sampler, it's got apples on it. I said, you know, being Tasmanian, it really speaks to me, it's gorgeous. Um, I said, do you want me to pick it up for you? <laughs> and so we sort of um, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and then in the end I bought it and I took it home with me and it sat up the front with me on the plane. Um, and the, the hosties were really great in letting me putting it somewhere safe so it didn't get broken. And um, this is the sampler here behind me. I'll just grab it. Excuse me. So this is, um, sorry about the glare. Let me see if I can get it. This is Charlotte Harris. So beautiful couple of little deer underneath there. Now, I haven't been able to find too many records about Charlotte, about where she came from, but this sampler was really cute, really lovely, a beautiful verse on it as well. And lovely, lovely sampler. Put it down. And so Karen reproduced it, of course. And then one day out of the blue, I get a knock at my door and there's a lovely big package there. And I thought, what is this? And I opened it up and Karen and Brendan had sent me the sampler. So it's got a special place in my heart because I bought it around when my mum passed away and it's just really beautiful. So this is my, my start on Charlotte Harris. So this is, this is Charlotte. It's got lots and lots of eyelet, eyelet alphabets, which are not my most favorite thing to do, I have to say, but they are so beautiful. Lots of over one text as well. But this beautiful apple tree with its deer underneath. Very, very lovely. And this sweet border. Yeah. And I think this is on Mayflower as well, but 30, I'm gonna say 36 count. 
36 count. She's a real sweetie and an absolute special place in my heart, that one. The next one is a sampler that I started for Sampler September last year and I was stitching it with my lovely new friend Akshay and of course Akshay is a super superhuman stitcher and stitches so speedy um, and he has finished his but I have not finished mine I'm sorry and I will try and get it finished Akshay before September that's my plan um, it was almost always my plan to go through and sort of finish it in September you know and I think I probably can but we will see <laughs> but this is Hannah Dawson and I'm stitching her on 40 count paper bark and of course I have all this fabric but I started all the way over here so I'm mm, I think I'm gonna be okay with lacing it but we'll see but she has lots and lots and lots of beautiful over one details like all of these all of these birds are over one I stitch them in tent stitch so um, on 40 count it doesn't make that much difference you can't really tell that they're not full crosses that was come a bit closer all of those birds are, are over one look how beautiful detail they have and that house of course is gorgeous I want to work in that house and underneath cute little stag and this great little dog here to the right of the house cute little dog and then we've got this massive hill with some sheep, beautiful border. I can tell you I was very, very pleased when I got to the border and it all matched up. But that's Hannah Dawson. And Hannah, I haven't got a colour picture, sorry, because I printed it on my home printer. But that's what she looks like. So realistically, there's not, not a great deal left to do, but you can see there's a lot of little sheep beautiful little um, fountain or water feature down there really beautiful and I'm stitching her using DMC very very cute so you might say that's a heck of a lot of fox and rabbit but I've got to tell you you know I love to support our Australian designers and our Australian producers and our Australian shops um, they're getting a bit thin on the ground but you know if we don't support them then they won't they won't survive um, somebody did ask me about how I stitch so I stitch the bulk of my stitching in hand unless I'm doing over one so or specialty stitches so I've been using a nerd frame this is a nerd frame and I'm really liking it one because it's very light and second because it's very narrow so I have used Q-snaps in the past, but I find them very I find them very awkward to hold, especially when I'm used to stitching in hand. So these this is a sort of nice um, halfway point, I guess, between a big frame and Q-snaps, and it's a little bit a little bit lighter. Um, and this size is really good too because it sort of gets the most stitching area in. But they're really quite firm. They open up here uh, let, whoops get some more leverage here so you pop your fabric over the top pop your clip on and then tighten it up and it actually is holds the fabric very tight I quite like it um, and then just tighten them up there they're easy to move easy to take the stitching in and out of I'm really enjoying this and they do come in different sizes in Australia you can get them from a couple of places I um, can't remember where I got mine from hmm can't remember but um, I bought one to try and I really like it so I might grab some more sizes of these and they give you if you color coordinating your stitching accessories is what you do they do come in a few different colors as well but that's the nerd hoop um, I have been What's this one? What is in this project bag? So this is a beautiful project bag from my friend Andrea. 
She does such a beautiful job. I don't know what's in here. I don't know whether I can share this. No, I can't share this one. So this is secret squirrel stitching that I can't share with you, sorry. Oh, that's a shame. But I can show you the bag, it's beautiful. From Andrea. This is some Teresa Kogut fabric, I think. Beautiful. Pop that over there. So, and now I have a big bunch of threads there that I don't know who they belong to. Hmm. I think. Hmm. I'm gonna have to dig and see where they where they belong. That's the trouble with pulling everything out in order to show you is then I've got to put it all back. Um, hmm. Pretty funny. Um, crochet. So, as you know, I'm a sort of a new crocheter and I've been doing lots and lots and lots of granny squares um, by Shelley Husband because Shelley's patterns are written really, really well and every little square I make, I learn something new. So it's been a real, real education. So as you, as you remember, and I've got a couple of shares, squares to show you of my um, cream, my heirloom, my heirloom blanket, um, but I sort of thought, oh, I need to do something other than white, uh, other than off white. I need some colour, and I need something that's not four ply. So, um, I drag, dug out this book, which I think I showed you last time, which is Siren's Atlas, which is um, lots and lots and lots of squares, um, and the squares are all named after places, and she'll give you the um, coordinates about where they are as well. So it's really 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 cute lots and lots of squares and I'm going to show that stitch those together and make a blanket I'm using Peyton's cotton blend eight ply in these four colors so a dark teal this sort of aqua a light blue and sand color and I think the border will be this sand color eventually so Peyton's Cotton Blend. So it's a blend of cotton and acrylic. It's incredibly soft. It has really nice stitched definition, but it also is, um, it will be incredibly warm as well. So I've done five and a bit squares. So I'll show you the five that I've done. So this is it's a bit hard to show you these because you sort of don't get the texture. There's some really great texture in that centre section. Number one, I haven't blocked them yet either. So, number one, number two, you see they're not blocked, they're a bit, bit wonky, but they'll block out. Number two, number three, again, some lovely texture in the corners there. Number four. I'm really enjoying these because they really, um, each one only takes an hour or so to, to work up and you feel like you've achieved something. And number five, this is the first one. So that's my Sirens, my Sirens Atlas blanket coming along very, very nicely. I'll put the link to Shelley's page uh, in, in the description and also the name of the yarn. The second thing I'm working on, I'm hoping to get this finished so I can take it to Tasmania because Tasmania in July will be freezing. So it's a, it's a very, very large shawl. It's called Briochelicious by Amanda, Andrea Maori. And I am using two different shades of beautiful alpaca. So this beautiful copper and a, and a sort of soft tan. And a beautiful blue. To sort of a denim sort of blue, which is a silk and alpaca blend and a lovely, gorgeous, just plain cream merino. These are four ply. And this shawl or wrap, I, I don't, really don't have much to do 
got a beautiful pull there that I need to unpull, but I bet you the cat has been at that. Um, but it looks... Like, like this. It's got the stripes. It's got this beautiful area of brioche stitch with some garter stitch, which makes it really squishy and soft. So I'm hoping to get that finished before we go to Tassie so that I can wear it because it'll be freezing. It's beautiful. If I stitch this again, I think I probably would go down a needle size um, just to give it a little bit more um, stability, I think. I'm using four, four millimeter needles, I think. Yep, four millimeter needles. I think I might sort of go down to three, seven, five, perhaps, just to give it a little bit more stability in the stitches, but it is pretty. And on the back, so on this side, it's more blue. On this side, it's more cream. But really pretty. I can't wait. It's massive. I'll put a link to the pattern in the in in the chart in the description as well. This is the top, um, of course, and it will be a big crescent-shaped shawl. That's one side, and this is the other. Really pretty. The garter stitch is really soft and squishy, and the brioche stitch is also really really soft and squishy. So hopefully I'll be able to wear this in my next floss tube and show you that I actually finished it. So that's really, really good. Wish me luck. And as far as my, um, my oh, vellum blanket is concerned, I am currently knitting, crocheting one of the bigger squares. Let me just pull that out so it doesn't go. So this is almost done I've only got a couple of rows left on this square to do this is the Rebecca square now they're a little bit hard to show so I think you sort of have to go sort of sideways but there's all these lovely uh, textured raised textures and that's formed from crocheting into the back loop of the stitch and so every every row where you see that you have to stitch into the back loop of the stitch and um, that is really tedious but it has such a beautiful effect and the same here these ridges are done by the back loop so I've learned something new every time but this one's almost finished and then what I'm going to do I think is I'm going to start putting the squares together into blocks um, into blocks so that I can then Put the blocks together when I get down there. I don't have to stitch so many things together. Um, if I, for example, four size two squares together make one of these, um, and I think nine of the small squares makes one this size. So if I make them put all the blocks together, when I come to sew it together, it won't be quite so bad. But um, I'm really loving, loving working on this because. Shelley husband's patterns are just so um, thoughtfully written that even a beginner can really do something really special so I'm really I haven't got bored with it yet so let's see how I go but I've done a big stack I have done quite a big stack of squares I think I showed you some last time but that's all the squares that I've done so far you may not have seen this one, which is really pretty. It's another another of the large the large squares, which is really pretty. Lots of texture in there, very difficult to see. There we go. If I turn it sideways, you can see lots of texture in there. And this has been, um, I've been using Bendigo Woolen Mills Cotton 4-ply in parchment. It's very, very soft and it has really gorgeous stitch definition so you can really see the stitches. So it's really lovely. So I'm pretty excited about how that's coming along. There's a number of squares finished. So it'd be really exciting to see some of those. So I might show you next time if I've joined some together, I might show you what that looks like. Um, yeah, I think that will help 
sort of keep me motivated, I think. So that's really good. Put those away. I'm really enjoying the crochet anyway. Um, it's some, something new. I love to learn new things and new techniques and um, I've been really enjoying that as well. I don't know what's going on with my phone. It's sort of dripped. Let me just pick that up a little bit. There we go. Here we go. Great. Now, from my library, I have quite an extensive, extensive stitching book library. Um, and I wanted to share with you a couple of books today. The first one is Sewing Rolls, Needle Rolls and Hussifs. This is a really beautiful book by Dawn Cook Ronningen. And it is a really stunning book, beautifully researched, lots of fabulous pictures. Just, I've just really enjoyed flicking through that one. Gorgeous. Or just pictures. And I can't rem remember where we got it from. Um, it was from a shop in America. It was, um, I know Dawn's Etsy says she doesn't ship overseas, so I managed to get someone to send it to me. I think Brendan kindly offered to get it for me. But beautiful, beautiful pictures. I really love looking at all the old, um, the ways that women did their needlework um, without all the mod cons and the tools and the accessories that they used in order to make their stitching I guess more proactive and keeping all their tools handy and making sure that um, they had everything they needed in hand. This one's beautiful, it's a lovely by Gallo. I get that one's beautiful. Really lovely, lots and lots and lots of work. And it never ceases to amaze me when you sit down and you think that these these items were stitched without electric light, without you know, without all the hand dyed fabrics, and you know they didn't have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different flosses to choose from. They pretty much had what they could get at the time, and um, they just did such a beautiful job. The second book to share with you today is by Helen Wilde and it's Embroidered Stories of Scottish Samplers. And again, beautifully researched. And it tells the stories of many of the samplers that are in the Leslie Durst collection. Um, and they're all samplers that are made by young girls as part of their education. So it's really exciting to see Sorry about the glare, but beautiful photographs, lots of stories about the young girls and their samplers. It's really gorgeous. Look at that one. Really pretty. I love this dog up here. He's gorgeous. The one on the cover, I don't know whether you can see how it all try and do it without some glare. But is this beautiful detail on the house? Gorgeous. Stunning. So I love nothing better than just to grab a cup of tea, grab a book off my shelf. And I, you know, I'm not one to read them straight from cover to cover, but I do like to flick through. I mean, oh gosh, this one. And this beautiful, um, on this side of the side of this line here. Lots and lots and lots of work in this sampler. Incredible. Really, really gorgeous. So I love to sit and just have a flick through, read a couple of chapters and uh, learn a little bit more about the young girls that left all these brilliant samplers behind for us to see. Really good. Um, I also want to share a few finishes. So I had a request to share um, a couple of the mystery samplers that Fox and Rabbit have done. Um, I started with the very, very first one in 2017, which I haven't finished, I will say, and I'm not entirely certain where that is, so I can't show you that one today. But I can show you, I think this one was the 2018 sampler. 
might be 19. And I stitched it on this beautiful um, tobacco coloured linen that I got from Linen and Threads. And I just used um, DMC 310. I used it double. And this is my um, 2018, I'm going to say. I'm sorry, it's the Medieval Menagerie. So this is it. And in this section here, and another section further down, I actually stitched the relief. So I stitched the blank spaces and left out this, the other spaces, which I think looks really cool. And I stitched these during lockdown. So this one and the next one I stitched during lockdown. So I did one month of each sampler each month. Now there is a gap there and I finished it in 2020 you can see there is a gap there so my one our family cat banjo passed away in 2020 just during COVID so I'm going to get a cat I want to stitch a cat in there just have to find the right cat and then the phoenix and then again down here the mermaids I did in reverse I really love them All the way down to the bottom. I really love this sample. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but it's really pretty. She's a lot of work, so she's actually quite big. I think this is 32 count linen stitched over two with black DMC. There's, it's hard to get the whole picture, but there she is. So there we go. Actually, just for you, there's, there's the medieval menagerie. And the next one is the 2020 uh, Quaker Mystery Sampler. Just don't know which way's up. Here we go. And this is just stitched on a random piece of blue linen, 32 count. Um, I don't know. I think it's French, French blue, 32 count. And I used some cottage garden, cottage garden threads. That came in a match set called Dawson's Moor. So there were four colours that all sort of matched in together. And I'm not great at picking colours, so it was a really great way to be able to just make sure the colours all blended nicely together and um, without having to actually choose four colours that go together. I'm not fabulous at that. But um, and then I just randomly placed them wherever. So this one was the mystery sampler from 2020. It's the Quaker family and friends. I didn't put a whole lot of initials in there. It's really pretty. I love, I love this. This motive here was for, Oct I'm pretty sure this was for October and Halloween, which as you can see, there's some little, little ghosties in there. I really love it. You can really see the four different colors. So real, brown, coppery brown and blues, which went really great on this fabric. Super, super duper. So I was really pleased during lockdown to give me something to do. We Here in Melbourne, we had some really significantly long lockdowns. So we had months that we were not allowed to leave our homes or go very far from our homes. So I got a lot of stitching done at that time because there was you know only so much tv you could watch only so many books you could read take that back there's always books to read but um you know i i did a lot of stitching and a lot of knitting and a lot of um reading during that time we had some really significant lockdowns that were really quite difficult and they were real sanity sanity keepers for us so I've got a couple of other little finishes that are framed and I'm going to go over here. I have got a couple on my walls that if I show you then it will create this um, stampede for the pattern I think. So I have stitched something called Indigo Roses Desiderata which takes pride of place inside my front door. I read it every day. Um, it's a little bit big to see 
to take a picture of but I'll, I'll see if I can take a picture of it and insert it in here so inside my front door I just have a little bit of a sampler wall um, and I've got a number of samplers that I've stitched and one that has been stitched for me by a friend but um, I'll, I'll, I'll insert a picture But I've got a couple that I'm quite proud of. Um, oops. These are these are all indigo rose charts. This is a little oh, sorry glare that way. This is a little blackwork sampler. I believe this is called Betsy. I stitched in DMC. Very, very cute little back work sampler. Sorry about the glare. Oh, and the dirty marks on the frame. Mm. Very, very cute. Stitched by me in 2002, so quite a long time ago. This one is the hem stitch sampler. It's again all by Indigo Rose. I really love this one too got some beautiful oh, sorry about the ring it's got some beautiful ooh, 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 ooh. let's go that way there we go some areas of hem stitch and different cut work in between the rows of letters which is really lovely to And the last one is another Indigo Rose design called, yeah, called My Son. And it's really, really beautiful. I stitched it for my son for his birth sampler. So Liam is 27 now. So um, I've got a date in here back in the day when I used to date everything. Um, 2005 I stitched it so he was already seven by the time I had finished his birth sampler so I will say that so but I loved the indigo rose designs because they did Catherine Strickler I think Stickler Strickler her name was and she did use a few specialty stitches did some black work there was quite often a little piece of hardanger in them so lots of stuff to keep you interested so this one has a heap of queen stitches up here for the grapes. Um, you can see that. Oh, that ring light, terrible. So up here in the grapes are a whole heap of queen stitches. There's some over one lettering. There's some black work, some satin stitch, some hard anger down the bottom. It's really pretty. So I'm really proud of that one as well. So there, that's some of my some of my finishes. People have asked me to share some of my stuff that's sitting on my walls. Um, I'll share some more over the next few floss tubes as well. Um, as I said, I'm pretty excited to be going to this retreat in Tasmania. Um, so next time you see me, I will have a new hairdo because in another life I was a hairdresser and when I lived in Tasmania and I am going to visit uh, one of the apprentices that I used to work with, Scott, who has one of the top salons in Hobart called Some Hallucination Hair. And I'm going to visit him and I'm going to give him free range on my mop and hopefully come back with something that just makes me feel 100% and a bit more vibrant and give me a little bit more enthusiasm for doing my hair, I think. So, excuse me. Um, I'm pretty excited about getting my hair done. I'm also really thrilled to be able to spend some stitching time with friends and a 24 hour stitching room people. What's not to love about that? Um, and also some stitching, stitching shop time. So a stitching time in Hobart. Um, it's, it's really great to be able to get into a shop to touch and feel and see things before you buy them. So I'm pretty excited about that.
I get excited about a lot of things. I have to stop saying that. Um, yeah, I'm thrilled. But to get there, I am driving my car. So I need to drive from Melbourne to Geelong, hop on the boat. So I'll be on the boat overnight, then drive from Devonport to Hobart, go and get my hair done, and then pick up the girls from the airport. So that will be fabulous. So looking forward to that. I will uh, do another floss tube when I get back so I can show you my haul and show you um, some, some snippets from the retreat. I'll look forward to seeing you then. Um, take care. See you on number three.